The console bar sits at the very bottom of your screen, and it allows you access to some precision controls when working with your objects inside UDK. Now, the first section allows you to punch in console commands, just various commands right here inside the editor. For a list of these commands, you can jump over to udn.epicgames.com slash three slash console commands, and here's a list of all of the ones for Unreal Engine 3 that you can try out. Now, some of these only work inside the game, and then others will work inside the editor, so feel free to play around with them. As you add more and more commands, this drop-down will fill with these commands, so you don't have to type a command twice. You can just click on it and use it. Now, as we move along the console bar, we get a couple of informational fields. So for starters, if I select a static mesh here in my level, you'll notice that it's actually telling me that I have selected static mesh actor underscore 565, located right down here in the bottom of the console bar. Now, it also tells me that I'm in the persistent level. Now, that's really only relevant information if you're doing level streaming. If you're not streaming levels, it's always going to say persistent level. Now, if I hold down control and click another static mesh... We get two static mesh actors selected, and every static mesh that I select will increment that. As soon as I select something that's not a static mesh, though, so still holding control, if I click on this little path node, it just switches over and says four actors selected. So it's just some feedback on what it is you have selected. Now, if you manipulate objects, so for instance, as I start to slide this object around, you will get some numeric feedback as to how far you've moved that object in any given axis. So as I slide it up, you can see there's a number down there changing, but because I'm not using a widescreen monitor right now, that number is kind of hidden by the name. So if you have a widescreen setup, that uh, number becomes a lot easier to see. Now moving on from here, we have the draw scale fields. These allow us to control the size of any given object here inside of UDK, most useful for static meshes. You can take a static mesh and change its size and completely change what that static mesh could be used for. I mean, you could take even just a little tiny steel eye beam and you know, maybe something that's only about three feet long. You can stretch it out and then make it just look like something that would actually hold up a building. So in this case, so here I'm looking at this pillar on the corner of this kind of chapel-like structure we have a static mesh that's already been scaled up. Now, these fields work as follows. The first field is just your general draw scale. That's going to work in X, Y, and Z uniformly. So currently, this mesh has been set to three times its base scale in X, Y, and Z. If we set this back to one, you'll see that our little mesh gets kind of tiny down here. So let's go ahead and push that all the way back up to three, and he gets to three times his original size. Now, the next three fields are your X, Y, and Z fields. Now, all four of these fields, being your uniform and your X, Y, and Z fields, all work independently of one another. So you can set the overall scale up to three, and then in this case, we've gone in the Y and Z axes, our last two fields, and we scaled down slightly. But for instance, we could take the Z scale and punch that up to two, and we've just made this pillar a lot taller. So just by changing these numbers, you can really stretch things out or shrink them down. You have a lot of control over the size of your static meshes just by using these fields. It's a more precise way to scale objects than using your scale widget right inside the viewport. Now, as we move on down the console bar, the last few things we have are the various snap settings. So the first one is our drag grid. We can toggle the drag grid on and off by using a little checkbox here. Now, if I come over here to the top viewport... And let's pick on, oh, let's see. Actually, I'm already moving that static mesh, so we could just do that. In fact, just to make things nice and clear, I'm going to click on the uh, Show Selected Actors Only button. And then if I click on the static mesh, right now I'm moving it in increments of 16 units because that's what my drag grid is set to. I can change this value using the drop-down, so we could crank it all the way up to 128. And now we're snapping in 128 unit increments. Or if I don't want to snap at all, I can just turn that off. Now, generally speaking, you don't want to do that. It's a good idea to always leave your drag grid on so that you can keep objects snapped right up against one another. This is especially important when placing BSP brushes, as you'll generally want those to, uh, especially additive brushes, you'll want them to butt right up against one another and not do much by way of overlap. Now, let's go ahead and switch that back on. 
as we continue on down the console bar, we now have rotation snapping. This is our rotation grid. Uh, the little drop down allows us to control the degree of snapping. So uh, the little uh, squiggly marks basically tell you you're getting about three degrees. There's a little bit of play in there. You can also snap to 45 and 90 degrees as well. And if you don't want your rotations to snap, you can, of course, use the checkbox. Same thing with scale. The checkbox controls whether or not there is any scale snapping, and the drop down allows you to control the degree of that snap. Finally, at the very end, you have your auto save feature. If you switch this on, you are auto saving every X amount of minutes, and there's a drop down next to it that allows you to control the increment of the save. So that's everything there is for the console bar. Again, it's a very straightforward window, allowing you to get some precision feedback on objects as well as some precision control over their scale and whether or not you're using any snapping. And that will wrap up this video. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.